Before I even say a single thing about this movie, we're going to begin with this. This is the cranial covering of Big Daddy Buffhead. That's all. I just wanted to show you all these luscious locks atop Master Mullet's noggin. This movie was in 2002, when Big Papa Lion's Mane was 50 years old. This was him at 34. I'm not body shaming, I'm just pointing out a fact. Alrighty, now back to the movie. Before hooking up with this scamming cracker, and serving people cheese sandwiches at fake music festivals, plus being the most crucial voice in politics and hot topic issues, let's see what Jaws thoughts are on this tragedy. Who gives a f what Ja Rule thinks at a time like this? Like, this is ridiculous. Cause nobody please find Ja Rule, get hold of this motherfucker so I can make sense of all this. Where is Ja? Ja Rule was singing and making movies with none other than our hero, Sensei Butterball. No. The movie is half past dead, which is unfortunate because after watching this movie, you want to go full past fucking dead. Without further ado, let's get into it. Straight off the bat, this movie will try and have us believe at least three outrageous and impossible things. Firstly, Ja Rule is some sort of smooth, classy criminal in some crime outfit. He looks like a hamster in a suit. Secondly, they walk up a whole flight of stairs to get to the place where Big Daddy was sleeping. We're supposed to believe he walks up those steps every single day, voluntarily. And thirdly, they walk in and wake up Seagal. And again, we're expected to believe that he is waking up alone and not with some 18 year old hot actress. The movie's lost all credibility if you ask me, but we're here for Sensei Saucy Balls, not the details, so let's plow ahead anyway. Big Boss Man sounds like his name is Sunny Eggfart. I think it's meant to be Ekvar, but his accent and egg fart sound better, so we're running with that. Hello, Sasha. I am Sonny Ekvar. And who the f does he think he's talking to? Sensei Sugar Buns works for nobody. You work for me. Alright, he clearly does not know who the f he's talking to if he has to ask this question. Sasha Petrosevich, you're Russian. Uh, yeah, mate. Where have you been for the last 20 years? I'm Russian. I'm a Russian Mongol and I'm Russian. Big Papa getting very defensive. I guess he's sick of people attacking him and his mate. Vladimir Putin. Yeah, I'm Russian. You got a problem with that? Sonny Eggfart also asked Segal if he ever slept with a woman over the age of 20. No. Jarul pleads for Sensei Slurpy to release the women from his dungeon of debauchery. Sensei replies with that Diddy style attitude. I just can't let her go. <laughs> they have a little moment where Sensei Cheesecake forgets that he is 100% pure black. And Jarul thinks he can tell Big Daddy how to behave like a gangster. Put a little thug in it. It's aye. <laughs> the man wears a bandana the whole film. It doesn't get any more thug than that jar. Oh, well, okay. Whiter than I thought, man. Whoa, 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 jar. Watch your mouth, son. Let's get one thing straight. He isn't white. He tells other people they're white. Now get your ugly white ass out of here. Don't come back. You got 10 minutes and get your white ass out of here, you hear me? Well, look, put this white boy back in the bucket and uh, I'll catch up with y'all before I head out, yeah? What you mean, we white boy? Because uh, Camp Harmony had a lot of real important history, man. It's a pity y'all white trash came in here and dirtied up the trailers. Now, I'm not doubting that Sensei Speed Racer is one hell of a driver. I mean, just look at his facials when he drives. But I do need to point out a couple of things. Firstly, this shit they all do in movies where they step on the accelerator for a sudden burst of speed right at the end when they need it. I mean, why not just do that in the first place, you stooges? And secondly, he sends Jarul, who's supposed to be his friend, flying out of the car and almost certainly crippled with internal bleeding and hemorrhaging. Uh, I'm gonna kick your ass one day. Oh, no, 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 he's okay. That's, that's fine, yep. Yeah. How stupid of me. He only crashed into a car with his body. Great flying doll, by the way. The FBI come in and Jarul decides it's better to shoot at them with his two pistols. Apparently they're after egg fart. A bunch of shooting and nonsense and Sensei self-sacrifice gets shot trying to save Jarul. Don't know why. Sensei flapjack flatlines for like 20 odd minutes and comes back to life because he's a god. We also get some flashbacks of Seagal's dead wife and as you'd expect, she's pretty hot. 
fast forward whatever period of time and Seagal foolishly decides to hide this luscious head of hair under the previously mentioned Thug Life bandana. I think it really makes him look hard and a little like that dude from 22 Jump Street. Hey, guess what? I'm Eric's bitch. No, you're not. Yes! I am! Ja Rule randomly asks Seagal how many cookies he has stashed up his ass. Number two. And Seagal gets super excited that Ja Rule called him a n***a. I don't want to spend the next five years in here, you know. Wonder if my n***a want to slip me from ear to ear. Yes! He's been waiting for this day for a long time. Vindication. Victory! I thought for a second they were onto the cookies he stashed up his ass, but it turns out Sensei had pulled a Conor McGregor. Titanium shim bone, unbreakable. <laughs> <laughs> what you bringing into my island, you see? My knee, it's titanium. Hmm? Now, there's some subplot of some bloke who's been sentenced to death and he stashed a whole bunch of gold somewhere. The judge has flown into some new Alcatraz prison where Seagal, Jarul, and Goldbar bloke are all housed which is a very interesting coincidence. A bunch of bad dudes parachute onto the island without anyone knowing, even though this is supposed to be some fancy schmancy prison. The band of baddies includes a smooth talking brother as the leader. It was a hell of a sunset we flew in on. They're always nice before a storm. And his female hottie sidekick with excessive makeup who does a twirl in the rain for absolutely no reason. I mean, cinematography and shit in it. Circle. This guy asked Seagal a question that I was certain I would know the answer to, but I was sorely mistaken. You believe in God, Sasha? Let's see if you guessed the right answer. Alright, now what do you think Big Papa Platypus replied with? A. Every once in a while. B. I see him every time I look in the mirror. C. Look at the thickness of my hair. Of course God exists. And D. Can I laugh in your face? Feel free to leave your answer in the comments or add your own suggestion. And the award goes to Steven Seagal! Most of the time. So apparently Death Row Gold Bar guy wants to talk to Master Maple Syrup because he was officially dead for 22 minutes and then came back. So this bloke wants to know what it's like on the other side. Rumor is you went half past dead and came back. Yeah. Took a ride on the flat line for 22 minutes. Something something yada yada. Death Row Baldy reveals to Sensei Slow Drip that he knows how he grew his hair back so bountifully. Not too many people know that, Lester. The bad guys approach Seagal and he plays what we would call as kids Dead Elephant, or in Seagal's case, Dead Walrus. This fool clearly hasn't come across Seagal yet, but he will learn. Oh yes, he will learn. But God is dead. Gal does some slappy stuff before literally launching a guy like a ragdoll into another bloke before taking them out with ease. A day in the life of Big Papa. Before doing this whole stunt scene by himself without any stunt double or help from anyone to do any of the actual physical stuff that isn't just slapping and flapping arms. Clown Paint tries to escape Seagal's downstairs dungeon and insults him by pretending she doesn't know who he is. Who are you? Big Papa then responds with the number of cookies he's eaten today. 11.37. Jarul's stunt double has an intense battle with Clown Paint. Now, I say Jarul's stunt double, but it looks like some skinny Asian bloke with a beanie because they couldn't even be bothered getting another brother as the stuntman. Racist. How dare you! As expected, Sensei Spaghetti boasting about how he's the only one that can do the job. Sounds like a mole you've got. Before the FBI lady gives him a compliment about his giant hog. This is heavy, Sasha. I'll be in touch. Seagal makes an executive decision to give all the criminals in the prison guns, assuming they'll definitely turn into good guys and not side with the bad guys after the gold. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. This bloke gives every modern liberal woman a bit of a punch in the crotch with his little speech. Why have you never been married? No one ever asked me. Too busy burning bras, huh? Getting your panties in a twist over women's rights, equal pay, pro-choice. Fighting the cause, right? 
And all that time, you forgot about love, didn't you? I love kind of cookies. Then your biological clock stopped ticking. Your feels went fallow. And now, you ain't got nothing. Not even a dog. And then Sensei Savior makes a play to save everyone, but ends up leaving the Supreme Justice Lady behind once he sees how old she is. He ain't wasting his time on that old trim. Sensei Shadow Master takes out all the bad guys one by one because, well, he's Steven Seagal. And the rapid fire cuts make you feel like you're really watching a fight, and not some heavily edited piece of shit using stunt doubles whenever possible. Seagal decides to question whether or not the bad dude thinks he can kick higher than he can. Do you think so? Yeah, I think so. Big Daddy Donuts hatches a plan to swap the death row baldy for the Supreme Justice Lady. Can we all take note that nobody else was able to climb this very rope? Well, nobody but a certain athletic sensei god. Towards the end of the movie, Seagal decides to take a look in the mirror and remind himself how awesome he is. Bad. The FBI comes to save the day at the end, and Sensei proves he doesn't need Stuntman, regardless of what the idiots on the internet may say, as he takes a dash. But it seemed Richie! Huh? Death Row Baldy pulls a baller move and takes out the bad guy with a bomb. Well played, bruv. Way to redeem yourself. Seagal flies down, even though he didn't have a parachute, and saves the Supreme Justice Lady. They find the gold, because Death Row Baldy told Seagal where he stashed it, while Seagal strolls around with that magnificent hair and stares at a lake. Because he can, and he's Steven Seagal. Am I Steven Seagal? Of course. Now I don't know about y'all, but watching him do all of his own stunts, and especially that thick head of hair, makes me yearn for more Big Papa movies. It doesn't get any better than this. I mean, look at that f***ing hair for God's sakes. It's magnificent, whatever it is. He sets Jarul free, and everyone is happy. They go off into the sunset to make energy drinks and music festivals together, possibly scamming people in crypto. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Steven Seagal scammed people with crypto. These are the things celebrities do nowadays. Well, my friends, that's the end of this cinematic masterpiece, Half Past Dead. Would love to know your thoughts in the comments, but for now, until next time, my friends, remember to shampoo and condition if you want locks like Seagal. Only wear a bandana when you want to look hard, but above all, stay awesome. Peace, legends.